Hello everyone, today on my hobby table we have Kaivitz KTI W01 thermal imaging camera. Kaivitz have sent me this device for free, so I'm definitely biased, even though I'm trying not to be. They haven't paid me any money for this review and I will not receive any rewards if you buy it. Let's open the box and see what we have inside. It's a huge box, takes most of my table space and the first thing we have on top Let's open it up, it's just a documentation, we'll leave it on the table. The next box right here, we have a cable. Let's open the cable, simple USB to USB-C cable. And the camera in the case itself, or there's something else in the box. The power supply. Now that's it. Let's actually open the storage case and take a look at the camera itself. This is the unit. Nice storage box with little foam. The device is made out of thick plastic and some panels are covered in stiff rubber like our, out here and on the grip right here. When you first time pick up the device, it feels cheap and this feeling mostly comes from the lack of premium materials and the product itself is lighter than you would expect considering the size. However, if we try to squeeze or twist the device, it actually feels monolithic and quite durable. Nothing is squeaking or rattling inside and to be fair, I wouldn't really expect premium materials in this price segment. The user facing side contains a simple 3.2 inch screen that covered with plastic glass and I wouldn't recommend removing pre-installed screen protector as I think plastic will get scratched pretty fast. We can also see plastic trigger and eight rubber buttons, which have well noticeable tactile click and they actually feel pretty solid. On the side of the unit, we can find a USB-C port hidden behind what seems to be a silicone cover. You can see on my device that USB-C port isn't really aligned, but it doesn't prevent me from connecting included cable. For some reason, every manufacturer interprets USB-C port differently. And in the past, I had issues with USB-C power devices where the product only worked or charged with the original cable that came with the unit. In this case, I have tested the device and I'm happy to see that product actually works well with other USB-C cables and chargers. On the front of the device, behind protective plastic lid, we have two cutouts, one for thermal camera itself and another for regular camera in case you would want to record or view picture without thermal data. The resolution of this camera is 256 by 192 pixels with a refresh rate up to 25 Hz. But in my experience, it doesn't actually feel like 25 Hz. You will be able to see for yourself when we do actual tests. On the handle of the unit, we can find battery compartment. And it is very nice to have replaceable 3500 milliamps battery. The manufacturer claims it can work between 6 and 8 hours on the battery, assuming that is based on ambient temperature and battery condition. The nice thing is that I have tested and this device can actually work via USB-C even without the battery. In case battery goes bad, you still will be able to use the camera. So right here you can see plastic covered with rubber material itself. This is quite stiff rubber. This device has built-in 32GB EMC with 28GB of usable storage. I have mixed feelings about this approach as I feel like having an SD card reader slot could be a very good alternative. At the same time, I have very rarely seen EMC chips go bad compared to sudden SD card death and we can only hope that manufacturer used quality EMC storage in this device. The first time I connected this camera to the computer to install the software, my Windows 11 was complaining about the installation file having viruses. However, after I replugged the device, 
there was no more issues and software was installed without any problems though i was a bit disappointed as this software only allows you to interpret already saved pictures we're going to compare the video of kaivet's kti w01 to my top down tc002 as they have very similar parameters and similar price tag considering available coupons. The smallest form factor of phone attached cameras is one of the benefits aside from the simple phone recording. However, as I already own several phone attached thermal cameras, there is a major issue with those. Software and hardware becomes outdated and manufacturers simply drop support even if the unit itself functions perfectly fine. You just can't use the device. This already has happened with my FLIR cameras twice. Once with Android phone switching from micro USB to USB-C and another with the first generation FLIR just dropping iPhone app camera support. I got feeling this would happen again with my top down when new iPhone with USB-C port came out. But I'm happy to discover that Top Don has made a $4 USB cable which allow you to connect the device to new generation iPhone. FLIR definitely have something to learn from the competitors. Considering that experience, I think standalone units are the great alternative as there is no dependency on any other device or software. And if hardware is good, your device simply works. Let's power the device and take a look what we have here. You just press the power button and let the device boot. The menu settings of the device are pretty straightforward. You have image correction, you can review your photos, you can review your videos, you have opportunity to change color palette, emissivity settings depends on what kind of object you are measuring. If you want to get more accuracy out of this device, then we go into the settings themselves. You have after shutdown settings, brightness language, you can change units in which you measure, temperature range in case if you measure very hot or very cold objects, time format, you can set up the timer, see the version and set up the spot on the device. The device itself, very simple to use, and we still have quite thick documentation here in case you need more information about how to use the device. When we got this out of the way, Let's take a look at the tests. In order to make this video, I just been holding two cameras side to side. And in the first test, we will pour hot water into the cup and you can see ice sitting right nearby the cup. After water been poured, we throw a few pieces of ice and it's very cool how you can see water actually moving inside of the cup. Let's scan my kitchen wall. And right away, we're able to see studs. We're able to see that my wall actually missing an insulation on the top left corner. I'm gonna be using this device with electronics a lot. And what I have done here, I took the lid off my laptop and just started it. I have took both cameras outside to test transparency mode and it is clear this one will be easy win for top down as it actually uses phone camera for this mode. Also you can spot right away the issue where we don't really have promised 24 frames with caveats. And later in the documentation I have found that camera has up to 24 frames but it is actually never got to 24. In the last test, I have switched devices to the high temp range and fired up my soldering iron at 360 degrees Celsius. And both cameras have failed to go past 255C, which is way below advertised values for each of those thermal imagers. So right now I am outside checking the way device is performing. I'm going to switch over thermal image right here and everything seems to be perfectly fine. At the end, I got this unit for free. I can't tell you go buy it or don't buy it. You guys pick yourself. This is your money. But I tried to show you as much as I could about this device. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this video review was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Like, subscribe, and I see you at the next one. Bye bye.